And uh, Russ is going to talk to us today about a number of security issues. I'm sure he's going to talk about credit cards. And I've seen some funny money laying out here. I can't tell whether it's real or counterfeit and some other things. But I'll turn it over right now to Russ Claymore, Community Financial Services Bank. Thank you, Pearl. I appreciate you inviting me here today. I've been teaching identity theft for about 15 years. Uh, it's the number one crime, so obviously I haven't been doing a real good job of it. But what I'd like to do, I find that this usually gets people's attention and it holds it for quite a while if I just wave money around. This is all counterfeit money. I want to pass this around and let's take a look at this. This is stuff that we've taken out of circulation. And some of it's really good and some of it's really not. Who would kind of a $1 bill? One dollar bill, yeah. I'll, I'll go over that with you too. I have a couple other things that I wanted to, to go over with you today on identity theft, how to protect yourself individually, how to protect your business, and not just on identity theft, but fraud in general. At CFSB, we have a frog center that's a dedicated group of six people, and our purpose is to stop fraud. And we do this for not only to protect ourselves, but to protect our customers, because the customers are the people that are our bread and butter. They're the ones that, that make my paycheck. So we want to make sure that our customers are protected. And we do that through our fraud center in a program called Verifin. And Verifin watches everything, and it tells us that this is out of the ordinary, this is unusual. And then we contact the customer and find out, is this, is this a, a good transaction? Is this something you authorized? Is this something you want it done? If it is, then continue on with it. But what this does for us is it allows us to get a heads up, to see something that's going, that's going to happen. This is not just electronic fraud, but this is also check fraud, uh, check kiting. Uh, <clears throat> all different kinds of fraud, and we watch all of this just to make sure that everything is in there. We have prevented thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of fraud for our customers because we have this dedicated group of frauds, um, and we, we call it our fraud center. Uh, we, we have found that if, if we will prosecute people, we, we get a name. Uh, they, they don't come to CFSB to try and get fraud because they know we're going after it. And we, we do that religiously. It doesn't matter who it is or what it is. If you defraud us, we're going after you. So that, that's a that's one of our, our biggest things is fraud. That, that's, a lot of places will just go, well, we're going to put it in the budget. We're going to have $5 million for the fraud this year, so we'll just write it off and let it go with that. It's not worth us going after it. It is worth us going after, but we've got to stop the fraud. And I have some uh, some handouts here for you, and a couple of different things that we I wanted to go over with you. Uh, these are are checks, copies of checks. These are letters. These are the secret shopper scams. These uh, these are the the service member that's overseas that uh, sends a letter back and says, I've got you to send me some money, I'll pay you back when I get back, honey, and I love you, and people send them money. That that does happen. Uh, these are lottery winnings. I've got hundreds, if not thousands of these in my office. One of the ones that just came out, this one is, this is a very good one. This is, this is unusual, you know, the secret shopper scam. We send you a check, you deposit the check, then you go out and you buy something at, at J.C. Penney, you go to Applebee's, wherever it is, and then you write this secret shopper. And then one of the last things you do is you go to Walmart and get a green card or you get a, a wireless the money back. And then you write up a thing, well, then the check comes back to the account. Again. That's, that's the secret shopper. The same thing with the lottery. You know, here's a check for $5,000. You, you won $250,000, all you have to do is wire us back $3,000 to pay the taxes and fees. And one of the things I usually ask people is, they say, I won the Spanish lottery. I said, you buy a ticket. Mm -hmm. And they go, no. But, but how did you win the Spanish lottery? Have you been to Spain? No. Have you talked to anybody Spain? No. But I won the Spanish lottery. People want this to be true. That's the bad thing about it. This one that I'm going to pass out to you here, you can pass those around so people have them. This, this one has to do with an IRA. Uh, I'll give you a little backstory on this. In 1970, I worked for uh, about three months, I worked for a roofing company. 
And that's all that the, uh, this person needed to know. This, this, this is the main, uh, that's all this person needs to know. What they would do is contact this person, whoever uh, they're going to scam. He will contact them and say, in 1970, you worked for ABC Roofing Company. Well, they had opened up a 401k, and it was in your name. And it's been sitting there since 1970. Well, my company will, and we've gathered this all together, and come to find out it's worth $85,000. And it's been sitting there all this time, drawing interest. And of course, this is not a free service. What we're going to do is we have this $85,000 that we're going to send to you because it is your money. It is a business. This is my business. So what I'd like to do is, once you do that, then you withdraw from that. You go ahead and go to the bank, deposit it into the bank. You open an IRA in your name, keep about $9,000 or $6,000, whatever it is. And that's what you're going to send back to me. Because, you know, that's my business is recovering this money. And then when the check comes back and it's a counterfeit, who's going to take a loss on that? Because that person that has wired that money back to the, the scam artist is out the money. The bank's going to want their money back because this is a scam. Not only did they send her one check for $85,000, they sent two more checks for $69,000 each. So we're looking at thousands and thousands of dollars. And there's a little scenario on the front here that says how they put they do with this lady. People want this to be true. That's the bad thing about it. These people are desperate for money. They want this to be true. So she took the first check, she deposited it into the, to the bank in an IRA and took $9,000. Then right after that, she got two more checks, and those ones you'll see right here. These two checks are for $69,000 each. Then the next page that you see there is how it came to her. It came in a FedEx package. To add insult to injury, this was COD. She had to pay for the shipping herself because she was expecting more checks. So she paid. Three times she paid FedEx fifteen dollars for overnight, and she's out forty-five dollars. But that's all this person is out. So if you look at the address that's on there, you said, "Well, we'll just go. We'll find out where this came from." This is the address that's on the back, and you'll notice there's no building there. It's just a junction. They made up this address. It doesn't matter. These come from overseas. They don't necessarily come from here. Why did they use FedEx? because it's not mail fraud. They put it in the U.S. mail. It becomes mail fraud, and then the mail, the post office will start investigating. A lot of the other ones that come, and you will notice on some of these, there's one here, and I'll leave these set up here afterwards. Uh, if you look at the, at the postage on it, it's Spanish postage, or it's Canadian postage. And since they use that, they're not using the U.S. Postal Service to scam people. So that, that's, the, that's the indicator that you see. The reason that I bring this up to you as business owners is what are you going to do if this check was yours? This check, this a counterfeit check, this is a valid business, it's a valid writing number, and it's a valid account number. At this bank, or that business, if this, if you take out, uh, I think it's cable vision on the top up there, if you take out cable vision and put in your business's name up there, how are you going to recover from that? How many things do you have in your business checking account that are automatic withdrawals, automatic deposits? You have hundreds of checks out. You have payroll checks out. You have business checks out. You're paying your bills. How are you going to recover from that? Are you going to close the account, open a new one? Sounds simple, doesn't it? Well, just close that account and get another one. And, and that's fine. We'll do that for you. We prefer that you do that so we don't have to watch these. But how are you going to recover? How long is it going to take you to recover as a business owner to recover from these checks that are out there? We have to find out how many checks you have written. You could have written thousands and thousands of checks. And they're still out there, so we've got to run these over and run them back. How many automatic withdrawals and automatic deposits do you have? Your vendors that you pay, the vendors that pay you. And they're sending those things in automatically. How about all of your credit card receipts? So they turn the bank and do credit card business. That's hooked up to your checking account. They <coughs> automatically deposit it. 
you've got to go back to each one of those uh, credit card companies and say, here's a new account. It's got to go into here. You've got to make sure that it all goes straight over. So you can see where this gets really complicated for you as a business owner. So based on one scam like this, I'll tell you another one that happened. Um, we had a someone made counterfeit checks and it was on a school. And they made counterfeit checks on a couple of businesses near Paducah. And they brought the checks in, they cashed the checks at the bank. Well, they finally caught the guy. But those businesses had a lot of recovery to do. They didn't lose any money. We made them whole. We got the money back. What we prosecuted, the guy's going to pay us restitution. We're never going to see that. I know that. But he's going to think, he's going to think about it for about three to five years and, and stay in because what he did was a class B felony. But he's going to get a lot of time to think about it. We'll probably never see that money even though the restitution was, was ordered for it to come back. It's probably not going to happen. But the, the, the whole point behind this is how is this going to affect your business? How is it going to affect you personally if somebody gets this? You know, we try and stay on top of what's happening in the world, but the criminals are so much faster than we are, they come up with the most devious ways. We're from Western Kentucky. We trust everybody for everything, don't we? How many of you locked your cars? How many of you? Just, just think about it. How many of you even roll your windows up? But just think about how many left your purses in the car. But just think about how trusting we are here. And we would never think of doing this in St. Louis. Especially East St. Louis. <laughs> Especially East St. Louis. We would never think about doing this sort of thing. And we trust people. But we can't be trusting with our money. <coughs> these checks that they got and here's how they got those checks there were they had like 10 10 businesses that they hit and four or five different banks and what they were doing was they were following the mailman as he was going down the road as the mailman was slotted in then they would just pull them out that business was receiving checks in payment for, for services that they had done and they just pulled those out. Now they had an actual check with a signature, with the account number, everything. And these checks were excellent checks. They were great counterfeit checks. And so it didn't matter that they didn't steal it from the business. They stole checks coming into the business. So if you were paying, well, check on Green Turtle Bay again. If you were paying Green Turtle Bay, and they were expecting five checks from people, they were all taken out of the mailbox. They've got five different businesses there. They just go to make the counterfeit checks. So be very careful where your mail goes. Don't leave your mail sitting out in, in your in post office box for very long or have it delivered inside. What do you have to do? But be very careful with that. Let me check my list here, make sure I got everything here. Yeah, just, just think how would you handle this situation if this were your business? And it doesn't necessarily have to be, you now that I have the judge here, it doesn't necessarily have to be a private business. It can be government. It can be anytime you do a wire transfer, <coughs> once that money, they push the go button, that money is gone. We can't get it back. And people do a lot of business by it. We, in a county here in Kentucky that lost $400,000 because it was a wire transfer and they didn't have the proper safeguards. Check with your bank. Make sure if you're doing wire transfers that you, you have a follow-up on this. Make sure you have the tokens. Make sure you have a, a correct phone number. You have a person to talk to before they start wiring money out because the criminals are very good at what they do. Talk to your bank and if you talk to CFSB, you'll talk to Trina, you'll talk to me. My cards are right here. I'll make this real easy for you. You knew this was going to be a commercial in here, didn't you? <clears throat> you set up your business to make sure that you keep what money you got. It's hard enough being in business. You need to keep what money that you do have. Okay. One of the other things that 
I wanted to go over. Does anybody have any questions on the, the, the type of scam we're talking about here with counterfeit checks? That's a big one. Can't even trust postal money orders. This is an excellent postal money order. They're not they can quick. duplicate those. They, this is a counterfeit postal money order. We had a lady got three of these, two of them I turned into the postal department. I kept one myself so that we can trade. This is excellent. It has all the security features. The postal inspector I talked to said you could not tell the difference between this and a counterfeit. So even though you're taking payment in postal money orders, that does not necessarily mean that it's good. You need to find out what's what makes this good. What is a telling signature? What is it? Is it there's something about this that just doesn't ring true? If you get that gut feeling, those of you in the the customer service end of it. When you talk to somebody and you get that gut feeling, you go, know, eh, this is not going right. Something's not right here. Pay attention to that. Pay attention to your checks that you're going to get there. Hey, Russ, can I add something in? Yes. With check scam and duplication being so prevalent, just trying to eliminate a little bit of heartburn for for the, the business owner, when they take a check into the bank, having managed a local branch here and now over at CFSB, you know the holds that the, the branches will say, we're gonna hold this check for one day, two days, 11 days, depending upon the, the dollar amount. I know that seems like an irritation factor for you, but what they're really doing is they're protecting you from this very situation. You know, if they put a hold on a check, say a $20,000 check for eight days, they're verifying that this check is authentic and, and payable to you and it's not a fraud. And I know that can be frustrating whenever you're needing to use that money, but it will create much more heartburn for you if it turns into a scam situation versus a seven, eight day hold. So just I know at your previous yeah. bank, I had a situation a couple months ago where Carl had taken in a pretty big check, yeah. and I took it in to deposit it, and the first question was, do you know this person? Yeah. I've never had anybody ask me that before. Well, and they, they, did, they did say they would hold it three days. They've become so devious making these checks mm -hmm. that it, it's almost become every check could be counterfeit, and that's unfortunate. Wow. Yeah. But each of the tellers or relationship bankers, a customer service representative at banks, have the obligation to verify that those checks are authentic. So, you know, I'm not telling you to give them a complete break, but, but you've got to be understanding whenever they're doing their jobs, putting a hold on a check to verify funds, because they're, they're protecting the bank, they're protect, protecting you. And just keep that in mind whenever they tell you they're going to have to hold your funds for, you know, seven to eleven days if it's a large check. So, and it, it, you make a very good point. This is for your protection and ours, of course, but it's for your protection. That so you, you don't do spend this. that money. <laughs> so you don't spend that money. That's right. We we have instances of people who bring money in, they deposit, they immediately go out and take it out of the ATM mm -hmm. or go get cash or um, start writing checks. And three or four days later, that check comes back as counterfeit. And they, you know, we say, well, if it's a counterfeit check, if you deposit it, you, you're going to have to pay us back. Well, the people that just can't do that are going to say, well, I'm not paying it back. Well, then we have to process it. And these checks are coming from overseas. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's almost impossible for us to chase them down, but we still try. How so, long does it take for a domestic check to clear these things? Are they still flying checks back and Again, forth? now that the checks are not being flown after 9-11, what they did was everything's done electronically. Almost all the checks are done electronically now. But that still doesn't give us, you know, overnight clearance or two-day clearance. It still doesn't do that because a lot of times it has to have a, an account number from one bank or from one business. It'll have a routing number from another one. It'll have a name from another one. And they do that intentionally to mess up the system to slow it down and they can return a check um, almost immediately saying that it's counterfeit or that it's a bad check or they may not even know that it's a bad check and that it, it applies against the customer's account they don't know that it's applied against their account until they get their statement 
and they look at their statement and go, I didn't write this check. Then they go back to the bank and the bank says, yep, you're right, that's, that's not yours. And they send it back as a counterfeit check or as a forgery or whatever. That could take 30, 60 days. So it's, it's not a, you know, you call the bank and say, don't call the number that's on the check. You look it up yourself, call the bank and ask them, is this a valid check? It's for, it's for $12,000, is, is this a valid check? A lot of banks won't tell you that. A lot of banks will. They, they, won't, even, they won't even talk to you about it. Uh, so know your endorser. Know the person you're taking the check from. Are you expecting this check? Situations like this, people are going, <coughs> I, I just won the lottery. I, I'm a secret shopper. I got a job. They're, they're, they come up with new things all the time. This IRA scheme is just, it's, a, it's brand new. It just, just came out. Uh, it's all basically the same thing. The, the other one that's, uh, anybody here go to Target? Anybody go to Michael's? <laughs> yeah, my wife likes both of those. That's why we both have new debit cards. Uh, Michael's had a breach, a credit card breach. Target had a credit card breach. And we're talking major, major corporations here. Uh, we're talking businesses that are mom and pop businesses. It's very simple for them for somebody to get a breach. We set the stage for you. You have a, a clerk in your store. The customer comes in, <clears throat> the clerk takes their credit card, they run it through the machine, they put the information in, and they go into <coughs> business. The scam artist shows up and he's got a shirt on that says Rux, ATA Services. And I come in and go, hey, how you doing? I'm with ATA Services, we run your credit card machine, I heard you guys having some problems. How about if I check it out, make sure that everything's all right? What's your clerk going to say? The clerk okay. works here. If your clerk goes, this machine better not go down, right? So go ahead and check it. Well, your machine is up in this false overhead over here. I'm going to climb up here. I'm going to check and make sure that everything's all right. Okay? Yeah, that's that fine. Yeah, because you got customers. He climbs up there. He takes and puts a skimmer or some kind of on there. He intercepts it before it's encrypted. They stick it in there. Then he leaves. He says, yeah, looks like everything's okay. I'll put a monitor on it. I'll be back a couple of days to check it for you. He shows up two or three days later. He climbs back up there, undoes what he had stuck in there, and he's got all the credit cards that you used on your machines there. Did you lose anything off of this? Probably not. Not yet. They're taking it out of the customer. They've got their accounts. What's that do to your reputation as a business? That will ruin your business right there. Your reputation is all that you've got. You can provide the best service in the world, you can have the best product in the world, but if you don't have the reputation to stick with it, you're not going to be in business very long. So that's going to ruin your reputation. Look what it did to Target. Their stock has dropped like 35% since this, this breach happened. Just think what that would do to your business if something like this happened. So be very careful. Make sure you know that you're your team members, your clerks, your employees know that it's very important that you keep these things up, keep the machines up to date with the, the software that's out there. When the bank comes down and says, hey, you need to go out and not download this, you need to download that and put it on that machine. Or they'll come out and do it for you. Depends on who you have. If you don't have somebody to come out and do it for you, you customers see up and there's that commercial. Because that's what we do. We want to make sure that our customers and their customers are protected. So there's debit cards. How about skimmers? How many of you have ever used a skimmer? You've heard of skimmers, right? Everybody here probably has because you use debit cards. Debit card skimmer is nothing more than a credit card machine. You use a gap when you go to the gas pump, when you go to any business, when you go to the, any place. You swipe that card, that's a skimmer. You can buy one of those for about 50 bucks off the internet. It's not illegal to have them. You can do whatever you want to do with them. That skimmer can be placed onto an ATM. That skimmer can be placed on your machine. They make little facades that fit right over the top of your machine, and it reads the mag strap that's on your card, and it steals the customer's information. Same thing as what you put up in the ceiling. It's the same thing that they put down here. So you've got to watch your machines. The slickest way that I ever saw a skimmer used, they put it in a little box about this long, about that big, about this tall. It was the same color as the ATM. They took some double stick tape and they stuck it on there and put a sign on it. As a service to our customers, please clean your car prior to use. 
Wow. You know, the car gets all brown and gunky. You see those, that. You know, you do that, and you go, well, yeah, that cleaned it up right nice. And what I just did, I just put it in that, that skimmer. He came back the next day, popped that skimmer off of there, and had 400 people that used that ATM, and he got all their information out of the car. <coughs> if you memorize my card number, please forget it. <laughs> for us, kind of safe or unsafe. Um, an example: last summer, I was at an event, and there was a vendor that uses the cell phone to to do the card. Right. They are. That is safe. Okay. And and the reason that I say that is that is as soon as it goes through that the square, it's usually the one they use. As soon as it goes through there, it's encrypted. It does not save that to the customer's cell phone. It just all it does is transmit it out. As soon as they swipe that card across there, that square will transmit that. Do you trust that person? That's the key. Do you trust the person that has that? But we were at a we were at the uh, Spring Chicken Festival in Hickman County, <laughs> and there were a lot of people that were there that had little booths set up, and they were using the square. Do I know those people? Did I want the product they have? Yes, I did. Was I going to use my debit card? I did. But what if that person was just there selling five dollar t-shirts and stealing credit card information? So even with the phone thing? Even with the phone thing, that, that could be just a fake. All he's doing yeah. is just getting the information. Party numbers. Again, this is where you have to, you know, you get that gut feeling. <coughs> so we can't use checks. You can't use debit cards. You can't use wire transfers. How about some cash? <laughs> okay, what I'd suggest, you, you can't even write a check to the church for your, your offering anymore. And you can't put cash in there. You can't do a debit card. So I would suggest Sunday morning you just walk in with a couple of chickens. And when they pass the plate, you stick a couple of chickens and put in there for a to go by you. It's kind of hard to counterfeit those. This is all counterfeit currency. I'm going to pass this around, let you guys take a look at it. Some of it's good, some of it's not good. And after we get done, then I'll be happy to talk with you and show you what you should be looking for. <clears throat> those of you who have counterfeit detection pins, those work most of the time, not always. And I'll go over that with you. I don't, I don't, I don't want to run over my head. You guys all got real jobs to go back to. You know, and you have you counted that to make sure you get it all back? Pardon? Have you counted that to make sure you get it no, all back? No, Trent will be doing a full body search on everybody if I don't get it all back. I know exactly how much is here, believe me. I did this this morning with uh, 28 seniors at Callaway County High School, and I didn't have any problem getting it back, so I kind of figured I could get it back here. This is money that we've taken out of certain. There are $1 bills in here. Why would you counterfeit $1 bills? See a big influx of this about August of every year. Big influx. Kids are out of school, they're out of money, and they're bored. They use mama and daddy's color printer, print off some $1 bills, and go to your store. Nobody checks $1 bills, do they? So how do they get it? What does it cost to me? They don't care, it's mama and daddy's printer. It's their mom and daddy's ink. They don't care. So I have a question. Yes, what if I get a counterfeit one dollar bill and I don't even know it? Trent will be doing a full body search. And I go into a store and they or whatever it is, and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's <laughs> am I gonna be held you know, I've had to check my bigger bills before, but how would the, I know if it's real or not? The, the, the key <laughs> behind this, the, the law says counterfeit currency, actually having it in your possession. It's not necessarily a crime. Trying to knowingly pass counterfeit currency, there's a crime. Let's say yeah. you let's say you go into the bank and you have all this money and you go, I want to deposit all that in my account. And the teller goes, <laughs> that's all counterfeit. And you say, they said, we're gonna have to send that to Secret Service. And you say, No, oh, no, you're not. That's my money. I'm taking this. This is mine. Now you know that this is counterfeit. You've been informed. Now you've broken the law. Okay. If you take this and they say, well, where did you get this? We send this into the Secret Service. They come back and say, okay, 
who was it, how did you get it, where did it come from, and we answer all this on this form we send in to them. And the Secret Service may knock on your door and go, where did you get that money? And you'll go, I, somebody paid a bill for it, so I know it came I'm not really sure where it all came from, but it was in my drawer. And they'll trace it down from there. That's what they do. But if you go out and say, I'm just going to go take a gas with this, then you know it that that's kind of currency. That's, that's an issue. That's a problem. So <clears throat> but what we do when we get something, in this, if this makes it into the teller's drawer, it's ours. The last holder is the loser. It's only $20, only $100. Doesn't sound like a much, unless it's your $20. Then, it's and it's just like stealing. That's exactly what this is, it's just like stealing. The counterfeit detection, man, I'll tell you how this works and how they get around this. Counterfeit detection pen is nothing but iodine. It reacts to cellulose. Cellulose is what's in paper. When you mark on it, it leaves a big black mark on there because the iodine reacts to the cellulose. On a real bill, a real currency, there's no cellulose in there. This will leave a little yellow mark and it'll eventually go away. It's a killer. Well, here's how they get around that too. They take a $5 bill, bleach it, take all the ink off of it. Now they have the real currency, the real paper. They print $100 on top of that. So now you have a $5 bill that's got Abraham Lincoln's watermark and Ben Franklin's face on it. You use this at your business, and they go, yep, that's real. It is a real $5 bill. It's got a $100 bill printed on top of it. You make $95 every time that you print one of these off. You get a pretty good return on your investment, didn't you? I carry one of these with me. When I go to the store and I hand them a hundred dollar bill, you check the and they and they they mark my hundred dollar bill, and then they go here twenty forty sixty. Thank you very much. And I pull mine out and I go, and they, they look at you. <laughs> so, you. You check mine. I'm checking yours. I just do that just to mess with the clerks. So, yes. <clears throat> uh, Another this very very simple thing that they do. One of the things that you should look for on a check, and I'll, I'll tell you this real quickly. One of the things you need to look for on a check is perforation. The perforating machine is very expensive. Criminals are lazy. They're very lazy. They don't want to spend money they don't have to. A perforating machine is when it makes money. When was the last time you saw a check that didn't have perforations on it? They all have perforations on it. Even computer generated checks do. Anybody recognize that? It's not a miniature pizza cutter. It's a tracing wheel. 99 cents. I take this, I roll it across the piece of paper, fold it back and forth a couple of times, and I've just made perforations. And that's how they make perforations for the checks. And that is perforations. So why would I spend thousands of dollars on a perforating machine when I can use this? It's 99 cents. I'm going to get stopped by the police one of these days and somebody's going to have to go to the okay? I can tell you right now that I'm, I'm going to get caught one of these days. Counterfeit currency, check washing. <laughs> that, that's one of, the, one of the other things that I've, I've got. Two other things that I wanted to go over with you today. And the next one is pretty good. I've got 12 minutes. That's good. This is actual check stock. We print our own checks at CFSB. This is check stock. I need some people to write me a check for $5. Who's got a pen? I'd like you to write me a check for $5. Anybody else got a pen? I got one. Yeah. I'm going to worry about $5. <laughs> I'm not, I don't want five dollars. I'm taking every nickel you've got in your checking account by utilizing this check. I want you to write me a check for five dollars. My name is Phil Russ. R-U-S-S, -S, that's close enough. Doesn't really matter because I'm going to make it out to John Smith because I have ID for John Smith. 
This is something you as a business owner need to look at when you take checks, okay? How many of you have ordered your checks from the insert in the newspaper? 500 checks for $2.99. A lot of people do that. That's fine. Then it's, you, you maybe, maybe you'll get all the checks back, or they make you look for themselves. I can't say that. But what does happen is it doesn't have the security features on it that it needs on it. And I'm going to show you that here in just a second. Uh, I didn't sign it. I, <laughs> I'm the bank security officer, and you don't trust me that far. This, this is terrible. This is just terrible. I, these checks were written a lot faster than the one this morning. I did a, a business math class at uh, Calvary County High School. These kids don't write checks. It took 15 minutes to get four checks. <laughs> oh, sure I, I just, it was yeah. just terrible. These are actual checks. This, let's say that these are checks. How many of you still got those checks in the box on your bed from 1983? <laughs> Let me have those. What I'm going to do is I'm going to trace some signatures. And I did that without my glasses. It's not, not really good. Now what I'm going to do is do check washing. Check washing will take the ink. It will work on some checks, on some of this ink, some of it won't. I'm going to set this over here, and you guys, because sometimes this happens pretty fast. If you guys want to come up here and look at this, I'll show you how they do check washing. What your, what your check should look like before you take it. This is what your, your looking for. What is that? Acetone. Acetone. Bring it on polish remover. Basically all it is. <clears throat> Works really well. I took that from you and all that off. <laughs> so, let's say that I found a handful of checks. And I don't want it for $5. I don't want it made out to Russ Claiborne. I don't want it made out to the electric company. I want it made out to John Smith. So I'll put these checks somewhere. Like I said, some of them will work better than others. And it takes the ink off. What it does not take off is gel ink. And gel ink is the key behind this. So what I would do is I would take these checks from a two liter soda bottle with a can of acetone and I'll take all the ink off of it. That's all I'm printing. Except for the part where I trace the signature. And the longer I leave it in, the more it will come off. But now I have a check that has no amount, nothing but a signature. I have a blank check signed on your business, on your personal check. Of course, it smells like acetone right now. In about 30 seconds, that will be completely dry. This check goes back to you. And you say, well, I didn't write Russ Claiborne a $5,000 check. It's got your signature on it. You're going to come to me at the bank. And I'm going, are you sure? Is that your signature? Yes. But how do I know that this check's been chemically altered? I'll pass these around so you can take a look at it. If you look at the back here, it says security document. Okay, it's got some kind of little writing on the back. And you notice it has here's the security features on the way that's printed on there. This check has been chemically altered. This one has not. But that's on here. That's why you buy your checks from a reputable company. Don't, don't get them out of the newspaper insert or, you know, wherever. And as I said, CFSB prints our own checks, so you know that they're right. There's that commercial. You know. <laughs> we'll pass those around and let everybody, now you'll notice that that's dry. Completely dry, completely gone. Just like you magic. Said you said you missed their signature because you traced it. Because I traced it with jelly. You traced it with jelly. something else? I traced it, no, I traced over their name. Well, the night ink and which is a jelly. That's the time I'll take the jelly. That's the time I'll take the jelly. I can take anything else. That's check washing. Can you imagine the kind of damage that somebody can do with acetone, a cheap pen, you know those guinea pens? You know when you go to the whole other garden show and you go give me one of those pens? That's what you're writing your checks with. This is going to happen to your checks. Okay, one last thing. I've got six minutes. This is going to work out just perfect. Yeah. I've got I've told you all about the, the ways, some of the ways 
So I, I've got a four hour presentation that I can do. But you guys look like you're starting to wear down on me here. I should have given a cut of lunch. We should have waited a little bit before. Uh, the tigers are kicking in. I tell yeah, you. I can see it. I, I, we're losing them. I told you some of the ways how you can lose money, how you can lose your reputation, how your business can lose on this. If you have somebody that is watching for you, and that's what we do, that's my job, that's our Frog Center, that's what we do. We watch out for the customer. One of the ways that we do that too is the financial emergency kit. If you're a business owner or if you're a person, You need to have this information in here. And I've got these sitting up here and I'll, I'll, I'll let you pick these up. Who knows everything about you? Who knows everything about your business? Well, anybody does. Who's today. that person? The government. The government. Well, that's a good point. <laughs> who, who knows that their business more than you do? Are you a sole proprietorship? Are you the sole owner in this business? Mm -hmm. Who runs your business? You do. Something happens to you. Where is all the information that you use every day to run your business? That's what this financial emergency kit is for. I'm getting on up in years. I have bank accounts in different places than CFSB. I opened it when I was in the Navy. I opened one in the Navy Federal Credit Union. still have that account. My kids don't know that. They have no idea. Why do you still have that as an open account? I really don't know. Well, I do know too because I bought my first car through them and I paid $50 a month was my car payment. And when I paid the car off, I just let it go into the account and it's still going to that account. And that's my mad money. Nobody knows about me and my wife. But <clears throat> that's why. But your wife knows? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, sir. My wife knows everything. Oh, yes, sir. No, no. Yeah, it's, it's when she gets mad at me, she takes it out. Oh, okay. <laughs> you yeah, know, my wife knows everything. I, ooh, I was in the Navy for 21 years, and it's hard to pay the electric bill in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And so my wife took care of all the bills, I haven't seen them since. But <clears throat> just, just think about who knows your information, personal information. If I die, and my, my wife and I are hang gliding in Costa Rica, and we both died. My kids don't know anything about us. The financial emergency kit, it has everything in here. Let's say that I have to wind up in the hospital. It has the medicines in it. Let's say you have to evacuate quickly. And you have to, if I gave you two minutes to take everything out of your house or your business that you're gonna need for the next week, what would you take? How long is it gonna take you to find it? How long is it gonna take you to get it together? That's what this is for. You wanna fill this out in pencil because it changes insurance policies everything that you could possibly know important documents where are those documents you know where they are my dad died about nine years ago he had a business out in California I have I was the executor I had no idea where all this stuff was and this is before the internet so I had to you know, I had to do a lot of digging but inside this financial emergency kit are things like household information, a legal document checklist, securing your legal documents, a ledger of important documents, emergency assistance numbers, emergency numbers, school contact information, financial account relationships, credit and debit card relationships, investment insurance, financial obligations. That's all right here. If you're on vacation in Florida and somebody steals your wallet and has all your credit card numbers in there, where do you get the information to call and cancel those credit cards? How do you get that? Right here it is. If you have to evacuate right now, right here, and you've got two minutes, this is what you want. You want to keep this in a safe place, like a lockbox at CFSB. There's another one of those commercials. You want to keep this in a safe place. This is, this is very important information, but you don't want everybody getting it. This is the financial emergency kit. You'll find this on our website. But most people don't go to the website after they leave because when they walk out that door, they're not scared like they were sitting in here. So I printed these off. Right here. <laughs> Write this down, put it on in here with a pencil so you can change it as it goes along. We're, we all think that we're bulletproof, we're going to be here forever. That's not going to happen. Fill one up for yourself, fill one up for your business. If you need more of these, my card is right here, it has my email address on it. I'll be happy to email this to you if that's what you want to do. <coughs> Your 
welcome to print off as many of these as you like, pass them out, you have your kids fill them out. I, I couldn't tell you what school my grandkids go to because some of them are in O'Fallon, Illinois, uh, some of them are in Calvert City, uh, some of them are in Benton, and I can't, couldn't tell you their teacher's names. It's all right here because this is what I have my family do is fill this out. I can get to this so we can get it really, really quick. I thank you for letting me be here with you today. If you would like to look at the calendar currency, if you'd like to pick that up, if you've got any questions. Does anybody have any questions? I've got one. Yes, sir. One, I've been told that hotel uh, locking, you know, you open the open with the magnetic lock. Yes, sir. What information is on the strip? On the Absolutely magnet? nothing. Nothing's there. Nothing. Now, they do use those hotels or blank key cards. It's called white card for all. What you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Those are what they use when they make counterfeit cards. And that's where that came from. But on that credit, on, the, on your hotel key card, the only thing that's on there is to get you in that room, and that's all. So, okay, so your credit card credit number, card number is not on there, nothing. But you're, you're quite safe with that because people tend to walk out with those, yeah. mail them back, you know, they're about two bucks a piece. I'm going to bring them home and cut them into 25 pieces and throw them in the trash. Yeah. They, <laughs> they make really great ice scrapers in here. <laughs> you can get the frost off your window. That's about the only thing they're good for. The only thing that does is get you into that room at that specific time. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. You mentioned money orders, but what about cashier's checks? Same thing. Same thing. Cashier's checks can be just as easily counted. So you, you can't use cash, you can't use debit cards, you can't use credit cards, you can't use wire transfer, and you can't use money. There's those chickens coming in again, right? Anybody else have any questions? Okay, thank you very much.